Hello and welcome to this channel. Today we'll be discussing about inflation and how UK is battling to lower the inflation. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing and clicking on the bell icon for notifications. Let's dive into the topic now. According to Bank of England, inflation is the term used to describe rising prices. How quickly the prices go up is called the rate of inflation. We know the rate of inflation because every month the Office for National Statistics checks the prices of a whole range of items in a basket of goods and services. They record the cost of over 700 things that people regularly buy. The basket includes everyday things like a loaf of bread and a bus ticket. It also includes much larger ones like a car and a holiday. The price of that basket tells us the overall price level. This is known as the Consumer Price Index or CPI. To calculate the rate of inflation, they compare the cost of the basket, the level of CPI with what it was a year ago. The change in the price level over the year is the rate of inflation. A low and stable rate of inflation helps to create a healthy economy. The government sets a target for how much prices overall should go up each year in the UK. That target is 2%. It's the Bank of England job to keep inflation at that target. A little bit of inflation is helpful, but high and unstable rates of inflation can be harmful. If prices are unpredictable, it is difficult for people to plan how much they can spend, save or invest. In extreme cases, high and volatile inflation can cause an economy to collapse. Zimbabwe is a good example. It experienced this in 2007 to 2009 when the price level increased by around 80 billion percent in a single month. As a result, people simply refused to use Zimbabwean banknotes and the economy ground to a halt. So what exactly has happened in UK and why the inflation is so high compared to the other G7 nations? Inflation in the UK is being driven by Brexit. COVID-19, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and supply chain related issues. These shortages are driving prices higher, making the cost of living more expensive. Let's look at all these four factors. Brexit. Britain is a highly open economy with total trade equivalent to 60% of GDP. GDP is a measure of the size and health of a country's economy over a period of time, usually one quarter or one year. It is also used to compare the size of different economies at a different point in time. The UK's manufacturing base is also smaller than countries such as Germany and Italy. However, companies in Britain face additional costs from Brexit, with reams of paperwork and border delays adding to the pressure. The pound has remained weak against the dollar since the EU referendum in 2016. The EU accounts for about half of total imports, though just under half of food consumed in Britain is produced domestically, including the majority of grains, meat, dairy and eggs, much comes from the EU. The think tank UK in a changing Europe estimated post-Brexit trade barriers pushed up food prices by 6% between December 2019 and September 2021. Worker shortages Fewer foreign workers are seeking jobs in the UK after Brexit, while many older people left the workforce during the pandemic. Labour shortages are leading companies to increase pay, adding to their wage bills and leading them to raise the prices they charge for goods and services. Unemployment has fallen to the lowest level since the mid-1970s, with the number of people out of work below the number of vacancies for the first time ever. Annual average pay growth, excluding bonuses, has risen to 4.2%, among the fastest rates for a decade. The COVID-19 pandemic prompted a historic shock to the UK economy, as measured by its gross GDP. Between April and June 2020, the height of the first national lockdown, GDP fell by a record 19.4% before rebounding 17.6% as the country reopened over the summer. The magnitude of the recession caused by the pandemic is unprecedented in modern times. GDP declined by 9.7% in 2020, the steepest drop since consistent records began in 1948 and equal to the decline in 1921 on official estimates. 
During the lockdown, UK GDP was 25% lower in April 2020 than it was only two months earlier in February. Economic activity picked up over the spring and summer of 2020, reflecting the opening of the economy. This was followed by a rise in COVID-19 cases and further lockdowns during the autumn and winter, leading to economic activity falling again. The decline was, however, much less severe than during the first lockdown, as consumers and businesses had adopted over the previous year. A strong recovery in spring 2021 led to a rebound in GDP, although growth slowed in the summer and autumn. As of October 2021, GDP was still 0.5% lower than before the pandemic. Russia's Invasion of Ukraine the invasion began on the morning of 24th February when Russian President Vladimir Putin announced a special military operation aiming for the demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine. Britain is a net importer of energy, meaning it's exposed to global price shocks. The post-lockdown surge in oil and gas prices, exacerbated by Russia's war in Ukraine, is no exception. However, Some other countries have done more in response. France has a 4% cap on electricity price rises, helped by state ownership of the energy producer ADF. The country also sources the majority of its energy needs from nuclear. Italy has a windfall tax on energy firms and is spending 8 billion euros to shield consumers from higher bills. Spain and Portugal are capping gas prices after winning approval from the EU. Germany has cut fuel tax by 30 cents a litre compared with Britain's 5p cut. Ireland has cut public transport fares by 20%, while Spain and Belgium have cut VAT on energy bills. Something Boris Johnson claimed could be done after Brexit, but has failed to enact it. The UK government has announced 22 billion of support for high energy costs for the current financial year including cuts to fuel duty, a council tax rebate and a repayable loans on energy bills. The measures don't, however, influence the headline inflation rate. Supply chain related issues Disruption from the pandemic along with China's zero COVID policy has pushed up freight prices and caused costly delays. However, companies in Britain face additional costs from Brexit, with trains of paperwork and border delays adding to the pressure. So what are the steps from the UK government with support from Bank of England to keep the inflation stable? It's the Bank of England's job to keep inflation low and stable. The main way Bank of England do that is through interest rates. It's also the charge they need to pay on their loans and mortgages. So what's the link between their interest rates and inflation? Higher interest rates make it more expensive for people to borrow money and encourage them to save. That means that overall, they will tend to spend less. If people on the whole spend less on goods and services, prices will tend to rise more slowly. That lowers the rate of inflation. The opposite is also true. Lower interest rate means it's cheaper to borrow money and there is less of an incentive to save. This encourages people to spend and increase the rate of inflation. Bank of England can influence interest rates in two main ways. Bank of England said bank rate, often referred to as the base rate. This is the single most important interest rate in the UK because it influences all other interest rates. Bank of England can buy and sell bonds from financial markets to support spending in the economy. Bank of England mainly buy government bonds or gills. Here are a few reasons why Bank of England expect inflation in the UK to fall sharply from middle of 2023. First, the price of energy won't continue to rise so quickly. The government has introduced a scheme that caps energy bills for households and businesses for six months. Second, Bank of England don't expect the price of imported goods to rise so fast. That's because some of the production difficulties businesses have faced are starting to ease. Third, Bank of England expect there to be less demand for goods and services in the UK. That should mean the price of many things will not rise as quickly as they have done. These are interesting times. Let's hope the UK strategy is successful and the economy recovers soon. Please share your views through comments. Thanks for watching.